Shocking stuff. It's shocking stuff. And I mean, now that we're seeing the Russians, of course, kind of rolling back, whether it's regrouping, whether it's retreat, we'll have to wait and see. We are now seeing what they're leaving behind. Mm. And all too often, it is an absolute trail of destruction. And it seems to be quite recent because some of the pictures, the harrowing images of civilians lying in the streets, for example, they did not look long dead, for want of a better phrase. And so it did seem as though the Russians really had made a concerted effort right at the last minute on their way out to cause as much human suffering as they possibly could. Do you agree? Or what do you well, I mean, we've <laughs> quite a lot of the analysis um, over the last few weeks has suggested that if Putin wasn't able to make the advances that uh, he himself thought he would be able to fairly easily, that he might try and retaliate by using some more brutal means. And uh, commentators have suggested that that might mean that he was more likely, for instance, to use some sort of small, relatively yeah. small nuclear um, device or uh, chemical weapons. Uh, so it's not inconceivable, it seems to me, that what might have happened is that troops have been given an instruction to leave in a, as brutal a fashion um, as as they were able to do. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that's a distinct possibility. But certainly, as you say, the pictures that we're seeing and the testimony that we're hearing, I mean, this is from various different sources. Uh, so, I mean, the only um, perhaps more hopeful um, aspect of this could be that there is uh, more evidence available in the future to prosecutors than the, perhaps there has been from previous uh, conflicts, because obviously you need quite a high evidentiary bar Absolutely. Absolutely. To, yeah, to, to fulfil the war crimes tribunal requirements.